Hey everybody, um, this is the Dene's Dungeon. It's not the Dene's Dungeon, but, you know, it's the corpse of the Dene's Dungeon. And today I'm going to be talking about my favorite games that are on the Nintendo Switch. Now, with the Switch, um, I don't want to be too negative, but it's not my favorite console by quite a bit. Um, in terms of ob objectivity, game-wise, it's up there, definitely. Um, obviously it has more games than the Wii U, maybe on par with like the Wii's output, but the cynical part of me and the cynical part of a lot of Nintendo fans just, I feel like a lot of us are a bit underwhelmed because it's this sort of mentality that the Wii U didn't exist and that all of its games are just free, are just like free, they just like abuse the Wii U library a lot and it's just kind of annoying, like, it, I, I don't know, it, a lot of these experiences are getting old, like 10 years old, but they're selling them like as they're new. And that's not always the best, but, and the hardware kind of sucks, but, okay, enough negativity. The Nintendo Switch does have a lot of great games. Um, that's what the system has more than anything else. And I wanted to talk about some of my favorites, because as much as I love the GameCube and the Wii and even like the Game Boy Advance and 3DS, those systems aren't nearly as relevant now because they've been discontinued for years and lots of these games are basically inaccessible unless you want to use an emulator or spend your entire life collecting, which doesn't seem too good of an option. But I do want to talk about these modern games because you can still pick them up. They're still in stores. 2017 wasn't even that long ago. So I'm going to talk about... I'm going to go from... Maybe some 9 out of 10 games, some great, some good games, you know. And then I'm going to go into the masterpieces. Um, some of these I have only the Wii U copy of, because I'm one of those suckers that bought the Wii U. <laughs> um, let's see. So the first game I'm going to talk about is very recent, Super Mario 3D World. Um, so this is a multiplayer 3D Mario game, very fun. It takes the multiplayer aspect from New Super Mario Brothers. Instead of kind of just tacking it on and making the camera a little different, it, this game is very much designed for multiplayer, and the multiplayer is great. At least two. Um, two people, it works great, but like three or four, it gets a little bit too chaotic. Um, I love how much they take from other games. It doesn't seem lazy. It seems like more of a passion, passionate, like borrowing. Like the whole legacy of Mario is, it's very it seems very beloved, and I like that. Like, you've got stuff from Mario Kart, from Galaxy, from Sunshine even, from 64. It just seems very loving. And the cat suit's a great power-up. The double cherry is also cool. The power-ups in this game are fantastic. There's so many. And this is a game with enough complexity for lots of power-ups to actually make, have like a dent, like actually add to the game. Um, there's so many and they all have different functions, which is pretty surprising because the 3D environment create so many new variables that you think they would just have like two power-ups like they did in 3D Land. But this is a great game. I did, I have returned to it recently. Um, I don't have, a th I really want to play Bowser's Fury, but I'm not paying $60 for that. Maybe if I find it on sale or I can borrow it. Another game from the Wii U, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This game is a fantastic racing game. Um, Deluxe specifically, I think really adds a lot of character to Mario Kart 8. Like, this box art's really cool. It's all colorful. The original game kind of had those, like, Mario Kart 7 and Wii vibes where it's just kind of a little bit bland. There's not, like, it's a, they're good, they're all good games, but they don't have that spark of life. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe really provides that. Like, the menus have so much original art and character. The, it really sells that big band feel, the music and the amazing feeling of the racing. Like, look how amazing the back of this box is. There's just so, it's so dense. I love it. Um, the items in this game are great. Probably the best items in any Mario Kart game. The character roster is a little bit messed up, but it does have, has the, has the core things you'd like and a few new characters that are cool, like Bowser Jr. I'm really glad he's in there. And King Boo's also great. Um, I don't know, this is a fantastic Mario Kart game. And, Kind of for the perfect one. I don't know if there's much they could do to make it better. <laughs> there's a window out there and it's, the light is emanating. It's really distracting. I'm sorry about that. 
The next game is Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Now, there sure is a lot of controversy about this game. But let's ignore that, because Super Mario 64 specifically is one of the greatest games of all time. The looseness of the game makes it so that all these crazy maneuvers are possible. It's really easy to just crack the game open and just have, do whatever. There's this commercial that came out when the game was released where it, it's kind of this phony marketing thing where it says, Super Mario 64, do any, um, it's like, go anywhere, do anything. And that seems like bullcrap, and it is, but when you play the game, it almost feels like you can do anything. Like, no, no wall, no wall is a barrier. You can always somehow get past it. And maybe that's a testament to the old game design, but I just adore that. I've spent so long, like, the most satisfying feeling in any game I've played in, like, years. In Bomb on Battlefield, there are all these, like, slopes that are just small enough to where with a well-timed triple jump and wall jump you can get over. And it's just the greatest feeling in the world. Sunshine, similarly, just playing the game with no objective and walking around feels amazing. The Flood is a genius gameplay element. Um, I think it adds so much. I, I grew up wanting to play that game so badly. And I remember in 2018 when I finally got to play it, it was the best feeling. And Galaxy takes the core aspects of those games and polishes it up. It's, I, that's the perfect way to describe Galaxy. It's the most polished game. It's not as freeform. And it's, I don't know, it, I think these games are all equal. Um, Galaxy has quantity, um, has quality and quantity, um, Sunshine has quality, but no quantity, <laughs> and 64 is just this, I, they're all great, I don't know, I don't want to, like, objectify anything, and of course the collection is controversial, whatever, these games are all great. All those hipsters who say Mario 64 isn't good have no imagination, and I question why they even play video games. That, that's really harsh, but that's what I think. Okay, um, now those are the games that are like 9 out of 10, great games, but these next four are masterpieces. You can't beat them. The first of them is Zelda Breath of the Wild. I, I don't want to be like all negative, but I'm not a huge fan of the other 3D Zelda games. They just never click with me. Um, the adventure type gameplay is less fun and more frustrating, and the focus on combat to me is just kind of mind numbing. It reminds me of a lot of modern games that I pass on on the PS4 or whatever. I'm just not a fan of that combat focus. But in Zelda Breath of the Wild, it's all about exploration and adventure, and the combat is its own puzzle where you can approach it any way you want. and <laughs> just it, there's so many options and it's so great. The climbing mechanic is brilliant. Um, there is a good case for why it's not great, like perfect, but I just love being able to climb everything. It reminds me of when I was eight years old on the beach. I'd like walk across like these boulders they have, just like to um, I guess get rid of the erosion of the tide switching. I just jump across them and climb them all the time. And this game brought me back to there. I think that in general is why I love platformers so much because to me just like that feeling of jumping around is so ethereal and fun. Um, of course this game has its short downsides. Um, the dungeons of course are a bit samey. Um, I don't really care about that though. Um, I think the game is brilliant. The designs of the design of the world is has so many great aspects to it. And once again this bot back of this box art is so simple with the blocks. But it's just so, it's just so elegant. I feel like this game has a lot to say. I haven't really taken a good look at the back of this. Very good. Uh, <laughs> very good. And look how much space it takes up. It takes up more than half. Very cool. A lot of these games have, the back of the box art is very good. They did a good job. The marketing team, they've done a really good job with the Switch when it comes to design and all the such, because most Switch games have really good design on the cover art. The next game is a spin-off to Mario 3D World, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Um, I think this is my favorite Mario game of all time. That might sound weird, but the way the levels are compressed down and 
there's no wasted space while still keeping that exploration and that sense of discovery from the old games while having all the new innovations and gimmicks from 3D World. To me, this is the best of everything. Um, puzzle solving with Toad because he can't jump is really clever and is such a cool lens to see the Mario franchise through because it recontextualizes every single aspect of it. Goombas go from being this small threat to where you just, oh, you just either jump over them or walk past them. But now they chase you and it's actually a threat because Toad is so slow. And the little items and coins that they give you, like the turnips, like those have to be like, there's a bit of strategy in where you use them because it's a limited resource. And besides that, you can't really harm enemies. And even things like Captain Toad's light being used to kill booze is such a weird mechanic because the only enemy that Mario can't kill, Toad can kill. And like the opposite, it's so strange. Um, this game is full of color and light. I love the art direction. I love how boxy everything is. Um, of course, that that's a big part of crit the criticism for 3D World. It feels very boxy, but Captain Toad rolls with it and makes that into an aesthetic. It's like these Japanese box gardens. Very cool. And Toad in general is just adorable. I love his character so much. Um, this game has a lot of levels. 70 worlds. 70 levels. It's crazy. Um, yeah masterpiece game right here. And the next game is Katamari Damacy Reroll. This is a game from the PS2 and that I discovered by playing it on the Switch. Um, this is another game where movement is extremely satisfying. You have the Katamari and you roll up objects with it. It's as simple as that. And <laughs> it's hard to explain but the colorful nature of this game makes it one of the funnest things you will ever play. Um, every aspect is so bright and cheery, the colors are amazing, the characters are charming, the print has one of the best character designs ever, um, every part of the world is just brimming with imagination. The whole game's philosophy of being fun and inviting while also being simple, there's nothing like there's no, there's like so many bad things I hate about game design that just aren't here. And the way Kieta, um, the way he um, reimagined re game design as a whole to make this is brilliant. Um, I love Kieta. I, I, I know his last name. I just don't want to mispronounce it because I have no notes. But he's a genius. This game is amazing. 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Um, I really want them to do the same thing for We Heart Katamari or We Love Katamari. I have the PS2 version, but I have not given it the full playthrough because I'm really hoping they release it. It's not seeming likely Capcom, um, not Capcom, Namco released three re-roll type of games, or Encore as they're called in Japan, um, and it seemed like that was it. Like, they did this for this game, Mr. Driller, and some game that was only in Japan. But I really want We Heart Katamari. The last game is Pikmin 3. Um, this is one of the best games ever made. Um, it takes Pikmin, the core idea of Pikmin, and kind of just makes it perfect. Um, the first game had this amazing element of trying to beat your high score, being as fast as possible, and Miyamoto really ran with that. Of course, the time thing is a little bit stressful for some people, but it's so satisfying to get it all right that I believe that's not an issue at all. This game sold me on the that time limits can actually be fun um, if they're used right. And in this game, there certainly are. Um, it, of course, Pikmin's a strategy game. You've got five different types of Pikmin. They all do their own thing. They all have different attributes. And you have Olimar who controls them all. The Pikmin world is extremely imaginative and full of life. Um, no world feels more realistic, both as an ecosystem and graphics-wise, the graphics in this game are amazing. Um, this is, of course, it's very realistic, but it also has amazing character designs for the things that aren't realistic, and the way the Pikmin all stick out uh, is so clever, because it gives it just, I don't know, the designs are so simple, and they're basically like the amalgamation of every single aspect of life. They're plants, they're bugs, they're 
insect. <laughs> I guess I said insects. They're plants, they're insects, they're mammals in a way. They just have so much to them. They're even rocks. <laughs> like, Pikmin are such ethereal beings of nature. I feel like they're everything good about so everything good about human life, or just life in general, rolled into one. The multiplayer in Pikmin 3 is fantastic. Um, bingo battle is amazing. Um, the mission mode is extremely addicting and extremely satisfying to get everything in. Um, yeah, Pikmin 3 is a masterpiece. 10 out of 10 game. And the Switch version is even better. There's multiplayer throughout the entire game. The pointer's a little bit messed up, but... Oh, the motion controls. Oh my god, they're so good in this. The way the gamepad can be used as a map, and it actually helps because you can tell which captain to go where, and the way you can point to the screen so seamlessly with Wii Motion Plus and make the Pikmin go wherever. It is amazing. Pikmin 3 is the best Nintendo game on the Wii U and Switch. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. And a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. So those are my favorite Nintendo Switch games. Um, there are a few others that are in that 9, 8 out of 10 range, but I didn't feel like talking about them because I haven't played them in a bit. Splatoon 2, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. These two games are also fantastic. They're definitely in that mold. Um, I guess also Mario Odyssey. Um, I have not played this game since it came out, so I don't really know how Mario Odyssey holds up. These games are also fantastic. Um, Splatoon 2 is so fun. It's just Splatoon again, you know? Um, and Luigi's Mansion 3 is extremely inventive, and Next Level Games are amazing developers and super good at pushing the gameplay elements of that. So those are the best games of the Nintendo Switch, barring indies, of course. I was only looking at physical games. Um, sorry if I look a little bit zombie-like. Um, I'm kind of under the weather right now. Uh, oh. I've not been feeling the greatest today. But, yeah. The Nintendo Switch is a very interesting console. I feel like, in retrospect, it's going to be seen similarly to the Game Boy Advance, where, sure, it has its own hits, but so much of the library is just ports. That it kind of has a lack of identity as the port, like, as those ports become outdated. Because no one's really looking at the Donkey Kong Country on GBA and saying, oh, that's, that's the defining title. Because it's on other things, like, in way better quality. But in the 720p screen of the Nintendo Switch, eventually the same thing's going to happen whenever they have the 1080p version or the 4K version. It's going to become completely obsolete. And that kind of sucks. But like in the moment, the Switch is okay. I don't know. I, I said I wouldn't be negative about this, but I don't know. The Nintendo Switch is like... It just... It feels offensive to me. Like, Nintendo's like, oh yeah. This, 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 you can sit this one out, buddy. But no, you can't because we're going to add one thing to every game you've already played to make them all obsolete. That's all.